Hey everybody, Jonathan North here. In this video, I want to talk to you about how to travel the world full time and how to escape the grind of the United States. You know, I started traveling in 2017. I kind of got my first taste of, of like what it's like to go to Asia, what it's like to go and see a foreign land and, and how it made me and experience how it made me feel. And after that, I went to Central America. And then in Central America, I was like, yep, this is what I want to do. You know, it, it it invigorated me in a way that nothing else that I've ever done has really, you know, made me feel. So from there, I spent a couple of years trying to get my life to become more portable. You know, in the USA, you, there's this thing that happens where you get invested in things. You know, you have a five or six year car loan. You get a mortgage that's 30 years. There's credit cards. You have a education. You know, in your education, you know, you might only know how to apply your skills to that local market you live in, right? You might work at a university or you might work for a company with all these very specific tied up skill sets. You know, your investments might be all local. You might own local businesses. You might own, you know, local real estate. So it takes years, or at least it took me a couple of years to get rid of all of those obligations and transfer them to something more portable. And we're going to talk about that later, and there's a segment on investing, which is something you really need to know how to do if you're going to live a full-time travel lifestyle, because you you know you might wind up to be 60 years old and not have a penny to your name, and that's, you know, that's not a good idea. So we'll, let's start with point number one, is how much state savings do you need to start to travel the world? That's going to vary to, from person to person, but like a savvy individual, I think could do it under fifth, or with 1500 bucks. You could just peace out, go to Mexico. And Mexico is high-speed internet. They teach English there. There are tons of universities there. 100%, I think that if you landed in Mexico City, you could probably find a $400 a month or $300 a month apartment and just figure it out from there. You know, you, you might even, from there, you might apply for jobs in Central America, you know, or in Guatemala. You know, there's so many opportunities. If you gave somebody $1,500 in a third world country that's two months of, of living, they could find out how to how to make it to the next four months, you know, how to turn that two months into four and turn that four months into eight or something like that. You know, you don't need resources to live this lifestyle. You need resourcefulness. That's something I've learned. It's your creativity and you have to you have to think outside the box you know you don't even know the, the chains that get put on you with those golden bracelets in the, in the USA it's it just kills your absolutely kills your creativity the the world you know there's no limit to what you can do there, we have a full life of, abund, of abundance and what traveling did for me was it made me realize my true potential on what i can do the things I can do, the things I can accomplish, how quickly I can learn things. Uh, you know, I also learned that nothing motivates me more than landing in a country, you know, and not having anything and just being completely vulnerable. Like in the USA, your worst enemy is your bed. That bed is so comfortable. And when you are living in a $120 a month apartment with a fan and no air conditioning, you you get this, you know, and you're eating, you know, rice, something like that, and living like uber cheap. Nothing motivates you harder to be productive, that, you know, than, than worrying about turning on the AC because you don't want to spend 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Like, it, it's a beautiful feeling. For me, at least, it motivates me. I don't, I don't know how that could and wouldn't be a motivator for some people, you know. It's... You know, my, my level of comfort is my biggest enemy now because I, I don't have any real reason to, to want more. I'm just kind of coasting, you know, but at the same time, I want to grow my life. And But that's like, grow it for what, you know? Have like a bigger pile of crap over there? No, I don't know. So anyway, that's at point one. You know, 1500 to 10000 bucks. You know, you'd be if you can't do it with 10000 bucks, you got bigger problems. That's That's the truth of it. If you went to travel the world, if you went to like Tbilisi, Georgia with 10 G's in your pocket or, or, or you know, Belgrade, Serbia, and you couldn't figure it out, maybe traveling ain't for you, okay? So, yeah, let's leave it at that. Step number two, 
Co commit. Okay, commit. What do I mean by commit? Don't keep crap in storage. Don't don't leave things at our family's head. Don't, you know, make an arrangement with someone to use their P.O. box. You have to go 100% in. There can be no opportunity to go, to go back. You know, you must burn the boat behind you. Because you know what? You could recreate that boat. The truth is, that boat does nothing for you. Those opportunities back in the States are just liabilities. They're mental space that you don't need occupied. That's, that's you know, because you know what? If you really needed them, there's other opportunities. You know, it's like you don't need to have that friend to use their address. You could get a mailbox, you know, for $40 a month. And that's, that's super easy. So leave, you have to really cut all ties, sell your car, get rid of all of your stuff. Don't leave anything back behind. If you want to travel full time, you have to be traveling. You know, and you might ask yourself, why, you know, why do I want to travel to begin with? Why do I want to do this whole lifestyle? It's like, well, maybe you're not fully committed to living in the USA. So that's another part of this advice is that either be in the USA and really understand what it's like to commit and get this whole traveling thing out of your head or travel, but don't do half of both because you're going to wind up with neither. That's, and, and that phrase goes for so many different things of life. You know, if, if you're one foot out, one foot in, at the end, you, you end up with ne neither one nor the other. Okay, so step number, what are we on? So step number three is to how to sell all your stuff. So I told you step number two to sell all your stuff. Step number three is you can use Facebook Marketplace. You can use OfferUp. You can use, you can sell on fr to friends, swap meets, to market, whatever it is, just get rid of it. Okay, and don't worry so much about the price. You know, because it's going to be a tough process as it is, you know, and worrying about $10 in the grand scheme of things, what you would be doing with your this new lifestyle of travel is, is way, way bigger than 10 bucks. Step number four. Oh, okay. This one was about, about in long-term investing. So I recommend using, well, I don't really recommend any financial advice. In my experience, the Charles Schwab the M card is something you want to get because most of the countries you're going to visit are going to be cash-based societies. And the Charles Schwab ATM card will save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on ATM fees. So everybody I've ever met has loved their Charles Schwab account. Charles Schwab will also give you, you can open up an IRAs, you can open up retirement accounts. And if you are not, if you don't have access to traditional American investments, but you're still an American or you're still a whatever country you're from, you know, you have to think like, what happens if I have to come back? What happens if, if I come to retirement age and I want, and I want to come back one day? Well, you, you have to plan for your future. I mean, everybody has to plan for their future. It's the way <laughs> I don't have to, I shouldn't have to convince you on that. If I have to convince you on that, that's a different thing. But you, you need to start, stick a, you know, sock money away for the future because if you live this travel lifestyle, like bad things can happen. You know, people get, you know, living in third world countries, you know, hard times can fall on any person in these sorts of places. You know, motor, motorbike accidents, you know, car accidents, like things happen. Like this is just, this is a worldwide thing. I, I don't even want to go into it, but you have to save for the future. And you won't have access to traditional retirement, you know, instruments. So it's good to open up some sort of an IRA or some sort of thing to store your excess in. That's not financial advice. I don't know if anybody would ever argue with that not being a good idea, but it's good to plan for the future. So find a way to plan for the future, plan long term, make a plan and follow. Step number five, get your skills in order. So you should probably write down five things that you're good at that are marketable. And if you can't come up with five good things that you want to be good at or, uh, or could be good at or are already good at, maybe this isn't for you because you're, I mean, you're, you're screwed. So, like if you're, if you speak English, maybe get a TEFL certificate. That way you can always, 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 you know, you can go get a one year visa in, in, in Georgia and teach English online you know, in China, 100%, tons of people do it. They make 25 bucks an hour. 
you can work 40 hours a week at 20 bucks an hour. So what is that? It's like thousand dollars a week or 20 at 25 an hour, 20 an hour would be $800 a week. Easy, easy, doable. If you're good at IT, you know, project management, something like that, figure out what you're good at. And if you have certificates, if you have college transcripts, if you have diplomas, you know, get all of those documents in order, birth certificates, social security cards, make digital copies of all of these things because you're going to have to take care of, take them with you. So yeah, like you can, I'll make a shout out here to, to Chris Travels. He just got a job in Vietnam teaching English because he, the, the YouTube side of the game wasn't working out so well. So it's always good to have the English teaching as a backup. Step number six, entertainment. So back in the USA, I used to ride motorbikes or motorcycles all the time. That was my fun thing to do. I used to ride bicycles all the time. We've got tons of video on here about that. That's not really a thing you can do and travel full time. You know, there's lots of things. So you're going to be heavily reliant on, you know, it might be an art form. You know, you might like photography. You might like painting. You're going to want to have fun things to do. So figure out those fun things. You know, if you like making videos, like I like making YouTube videos. This is just a hobby for me. I like this as a vlog, you know, like talking about my my thoughts and and, di- and chronicling these these diaries. But figure out something fun to do because if you sh- if you decide to live this lifestyle, you're going to get bored and you're going to fall into bad things most likely. You know, if you have nothing to do, that bar stool starts looking very you know, very appealing. It's, you know, and all the vices, the vices come from, from idleness in my experience. You know, if you like running, get a good shot, good set of running shoes, make it a priority to get a, a gym membership everywhere you go. You know, when you look for a place to live, make sure there's a gym there, or maybe there's a gym down the road, something like that. That kind of is a segue into the next step, step seven, about being mindful about your health. So you look at a place like Mexico, like the oily food there, and I, I love Mexico and the food is great, but they just, the the health ideas of the West haven't really made it into a lot of rural places. Like they're they're chugging, co- you know, two liters of cola in, in a lot of those places. And they're eating, you know, fried foods with the cheapest, you know, the cheapest of cheapest vegetable seed oils possible. And they're, and those ingredients, you know, the sugars and the, that's what kind of makes all those foods really delicious is that they're super unhealthy. Like they're all, it's all fried, sweet, you know, trans fat, hydrogenated fat sort of things. And it's a slippery slope. So you really have to be mindful of your health. So figure out how to have a good diet, you know, put, maybe put, eat fruit, you know, for one meal a day, you know, or maybe try intermittent fasting. I've been doing fasting here just because I want to save money, you know, and uh, I don't eat until five o'clock and then five o'clock comes around and I have like a beautiful Thai dish and it's, you know, great. And, and my weight's never been lower. I just weighed myself. I'm 165 pounds, not doing anything special, you know, just push-ups, sit-ups, you know, you can do calisthenics at home. It's easy. And also you should be mindful of the drinking. Stay, stay away from drinking. Drinking is a slippery, slippery slope that you don't even, you know, realize you're slipping down because the thing about drinking is that it's the, the I think the effects of, of alcohol last weeks. So a big piece of advice is just maybe just stay away from drinking altogether or limit it to once or twice, once a week max, you know, two times a month maybe, or, or none at all. It's just sometimes, you know, I in Costa Rica recently... I found myself drinking almost every night because there just wasn't anything to do. I was just hyper bored. Even though I had, I brought my bike to Costa Rica and I was cycling all the time. It's just like, I got nothing else to do. Might as well go sit at a bar, watch TV. It's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. Step number eight, and this is the final step, is practice living cheap. So I think in, in most Asian countries, most Eastern European countries, most like Southern Western European countries, almost all African countries, all South American countries, except for maybe, no, I can't even think of a, of a South American country, all Central American countries. It's like the only, the only country where living over $1,000 is not an option is really the United States and maybe Canada. Where else? 
Un most of the rest of the world, you can figure out how to live cheap. You know, and of course, like Northern Europe, like the Scandinavian countries, the, you know, the UK can't, can't really do it there. But living under a thousand bucks a month is doable in any Latin American country, more or less. And most Asian countries, you know, maybe not like Singapore might be a little difficult, uh, but I'm still, I'm sure it's still doable. You know, even the Eastern, even, um, what is this? Middle Eastern countries. You can 100% live under $1,000 a month because, you know, there, there are workers there, you know, the, the workers there live that cheaply. So you can live amongst them. And so my, my advice to you is to figure out how to live cheaply, how to, how to budget how to figure out how to spend five dollars a day on food and spend two hundred dollars a month on apartment, you know, and fifty dollars a month on utilities, and you're good. I mean, you could always go cheap. You know, what what does that come out to? That's like one fifty a month on food, two hundred a month on apartments. So you're at three fifty plus another fifty for utilities, four hundred, and then I don't know, throw two three hundred dollars in there for tons of entertainment, and you're living on seven hundred dollars a month, and you can do that, and you'll say, huh. Am I any less happy than I was living on seven thousand dollars a month in the United States? And the answer will will most likely be no. So it's really not about resources. Again, it's about resourcefulness. And what that'll do is that'll give you all the buffer you need to if you, if you have a mishap, if you you know if you get fired from some job, you can always take you know seven hundred dollars and say okay I got three months, or you can take twenty one hundred dollars and say I got three months. And be good to go. So, those are my my eight steps to to live and travel the world full time. If you got anything out of this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I thank you so much for watching. And if you have anything to add, please leave it in the comments below. And if you think I'm wrong about anything, please let me know. Bye bye.